Well, thanks for watching, guys. Pretty awesome week down south. Well, I'm a neck. Oh, don't do all of it. Can't you read that? Marty's and everything. Sweet. Yeah, bro. Just there. Yep. Yep. Fishing time. I wouldn't be able to bring you these productions without help of my sponsors. It's extremely expensive to go fishing. Yes. Certainly not a poor man's sport anyway when it comes to boats. Thanks to DNA for providing the boat and Honda for the engine and Big Blue for providing me tackle. And please guys, help me, help you, support my sponsors, buy their product. It's a good product. The reason I choose these guys is because they do make top quality product. It's not just because they give me free stuff. I get lots and lots of companies hitting me up to advertise their product. I choose a select few, I choose good quality product, I don't choose substandard products. So support me, buy my sponsor's product, it's good, it's well worth the money, and it lasts the distance. What a beautiful day here on the west coast. Awesome, the grave digger. Close to go. It's another day, we've been frantically landscaping the last week. We've had a couple of woofers here, we've just had one actually, and we've just got another woofer from France. We've had a German woofer, now we've got a French woofer, so we've been smashing out all these jobs around the yard in the section. Regraveling the paths, stacking rocks, making a new culvert, extending the driveway, gardening, composting, uh, splitting firewood, stacking firewood, getting kelp from the beach, all sorts of awesome jobs. And today, we're just finishing off the new culvert in the front yard, and then we're gonna clear a bunch of trees. I've just restacked all this wood, so I've been saving this wood for years, hoping to do something useful with it. I get off the beach, it's all totra and silver pine and what, I don't wanna cut it up for firewood, so I'm saving it, hopefully for a new build project we've got uh, coming up soon for you. And check this out, I've got this wicked piece of wood off the beach, and the plan is to build the kids' wicked bunk bed, and this is gonna be the corner it's got heaps of character. Look at all this character it's got. It's a pretty awesome, amazing piece of wood. And then we're going to go down to South Westland with the boat. A man man fishing man. Because the ocean's threatening to come right. It's not coming right yet, but it's kind of threatening too. So we might get lucky and be able to get the boat out. If not, we'll have a boring couple of days looking at the rough seas. What happened? Right there. <laughs> My spelling book fell through the deck. Are you going to go get it? I'll go! No, no, don't, don't, no, no, don't rip that up. You got it? Yep. Good work, bro. See you, boys. Have a good day. Charlie, put your boots on. Hast. Here we are on Harst. This is Manville down here. There is the occasional woman that has been spotted. I think the ones that can't handle the jandal go home pretty quick. It's winter. Winter is a lovely time of year down here. A lot of people refuse to move, move here. Mainly Kristen, when I say a lot of people, because of all the sand flies. But yep. I'd just like to point out, not one sand fly. Charlie, have you seen any sand flies this morning? No. What's that? No. No what? Sand flies. No sand flies? No. Hello, sausage dog. That just spied one of those elusive women right there actually, disappearing around a corner of the boat. Very shy creatures this time of year. Kind of like the deer. I don't know where they will disappear to. This is an old mate of mine, Danny Reedy. Danny's an old chopper pilot. Decided to crash land his chopper in a riverbed once, didn't he? Actually, he didn't crash land. He set it down quite nicely. And then he had another close call and he said, that's it. I'm out. I'm going to quit while the quitting's good and he's moved down to Haas. Look at that, he's now living the dream. My plan is actually to come and, and live next door to Danny somewhere. I want to buy a put patch of land over there. Maybe on the other side of the river we can throw rocks at each other. I'm a few years off, but that's the plan. That is the goal. We're going to retire. I don't think Kristen's going to join me. I think she's going to stay up there. But well, me and Danny will live down here and Kristen and Desma can have their... Oh, there, there she is. Hey, oh, she's back again. Yes. Anyway, we're going to go fishing. Bloody scones are a bit stale, mate. What's the story? It's a hard road to find the perfect scone. Just as well, I got a mug of tea here to wash it down with, eh? 
That's why you got to have tea with scones, you see, otherwise they get stuck in your throat. Can't swallow the damn things. Fruit of the gods. Danny's been breeding them. He's been crossing varieties and grafting. He hasn't actually, he's just got a couple of trees at home, but they're bloody delicious. Ours all got torn out in the storm and aren't big enough, so Danny's just informed me that some of his are on the ground, we're going to go around and, and, and <laughs> pinch them when he's not. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> See you later Danny! Bloody camera show of these folks. Yes, I know, but I wouldn't have an awesome lifestyle like this if I didn't stick my camera in people's faces, so they totally understand. Ready to go? Yep. Awesome! Awesome is. Alright, here we are. About to go for a mission. Here we go! Boom, boom, boom! Bloody hell, we've come out for blue nose and none of my reels hold enough line to get us on the bottom. Blooming heck. Oh well, I guess we'll go back into shallow water, catch some shallow water fish. It says 300 though, Dad. Bunch of amateurs. Oh, uh, we've come up and dropped down a deep drop on 90 metres, just to see what we can see. And it's such a big sinker. Left hand down, Charlie. Such a big sinker, I'm not sure what we've got here. It's got a bit of weight, not a whole heap, but... It. Might be a big blue cod, maybe. I hooked it, but it was too shark. heavy. It was too long of a line for me. Ah, oh, bloody hell. <laughs> we got, <laughs> we got a small sea patch and a small terra key. It's that big sinker made it feel like it was something bigger. Blimey neck. Oh, those crayfish better look out, because the Germans are coming. <laughs> Sending more to him to see if he can get us some kinners and some power and maybe a crayfish or two. And he's off. Fishing time! Dad's not going to get up. He's too tired. The moment I go go fishing. Any bites, Charlie? Happen. Oh, crayfish. But they all have um, eggs. Mm. Yeah. Found crayfish, but they all didn't eat. Oh, he bought me some kinners back. Where's all the power? <laughs> couldn't find it. Hey, take him to my secret power spot, and you couldn't find the power. Actually, the power's all in the real shallow water over there. Tried to, I tried to hold on the rocks. It's a bit of a swell up there now, <laughs> and it just took me out. Did you get a was, Did you get a hiding? <laughs> just like pulling me out. <laughs> What are we doing, Charlie? Fishing. Yes, you probably figured out we're fishing by now. Not doing much catching. It's been a very unproductive day. I haven't been cheaper to buy it from the bloody supermarket. Once again, we can see fish in the sound and they're just not biting. So we're just going to catch a couple more. We've got one gurnard. One gurnard in our chili bin. We haven't really been fishing very hard though. We've just been mucking around all day, cruising around, trying to find the deep holes for blue nose. Only to discover the line on our reels doesn't go down that deep. So we're just going to try to catch a couple more fish for a feed tonight and then we're going to go find somewhere to camp. Light a fire, go to sleep. Come on Charlie, rip his head off! I made a real rookie mistake actually when I gave my old boat back. I didn't take the SIM card out of the SIM rent and it had all of my marks in there. And then Jason pretty much sold it straight away. <laughs> it was only in there for a couple of days and it got sold. And I rang him up and said, grab that bloody the card out of the SIM red. And he said, oh, it's too late, it's already sold. So all of my marks for this area that I painstakingly collected over the couple of, last couple of years are gone. Gone, I tell you. So now we have to start from scratch again and find all the little spots, and little outcrops and little pinnacles. Ah, we're out of here. The fish just aren't biting. One's dinking gurnard. There's always tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Oh, one gurnard and two sea perch for dinner. We've got two sea perch in a live bait tank. We were going to use them as groper bait. But uh, yeah, you guys know about that story, don't you? Off we go getting a bit dark on it. I've got to go find Wi-Fi reception because my drone's not turning on. I can't get aerial footage of the boat without the drone. 
minor details. I'll catch up with you a bit later on when we get to our campsite. Not too sure when that'll be or where that'll be. Awesome. We're currently at the top 10 park in Haas, Holiday Park. They've put us up for the night, which is blooming awesome. Check out these units, it's a tidy little unit. Um, they'll give you a bit of a deal if you're a fisherman, I believe. Just say you heard of the top 10 holiday park through Josh Jones and we'd like a special deal, please. And they'll put you up one of these awesome units. Bathroom with an awesome shower. Little kitchen here, big cooking area over the other side there. Pretty sweet place. You awake there, Chief? What? Do not disturb. Oh, can you read, Charlie? Yeah, do not disturb. I actually took Charlie out of school for a day to come down here. Uh, so he's got to read us a whole hunting magazine from start to finish. Yes. Here we are, Jackson's Bay, just at the wharf waiting for Pat and Reese to turn up. We tried to find them this morning, we went for a drive down the gravel roads but we couldn't see them anywhere so we figured we'd launch the boat and just tie up to a buoy here and wait for them to turn up. Well, we figured while we're waiting for Pat we'll make a bit of burley and get it in the water. This is a really good homemade burley recipe. We're using poultry feed or lane pellets and then a bunch of pilchards in here and we're going to throw some power guts and some kinner in there as well. We'll add the chicken feed in and some water and make it into a mush and then we can just make balls of that and chuck it out the back. It's really good cheap early. Pat just turned up, Pat and Reese and Silas and I've just tied some more braid onto this braid with a slim beauty knot, thin braid on a thick braid. It's a great knot for joining two lines. There we go, the old slim beauty, it's an absolute pearl up good as gold. Uh, I'll show you how to tie that knot later on. It's on one of my other tar hunting videos but not on the fishing video so we'll tie the Slim Beauty tonight. We've got to pick up Pat right now. They're just getting their gear and walking out onto the wharf so we're hoping that by spooling this braid onto that braid, it's a pretty thick braid, 36 kg, 80 pounds. It's really thick. I don't know how much we'll be able to get on but hopefully we'll be able to get down to the groper with the Shimano 2000 OC bait runner. <laughs> no, this braid's pretty thick, it's going to take up a lot of room, but with a bit of luck we'll be able to get it on. All right. Fish on! Reese just lost the sinker, caught the bottom, that's it lip, and then drop it down. Nice steady pressure. Oh, fish off again. Fish on. What do you got, Charlie? Crayfish or starfish? Probably a sea perch, actually. Fish on. Yep, there she be. Must be a big one. Shark. Big Cherokee. Oh, big bluey, maybe. Oh, big Cherokee. Massive, hold her up, bro. Yeah. They're right under us. Look at that, heaps of them. Oh, you've got double hookup morits. Yeah. <laughs> Bit of lemon fish, mate. Okay. Yay, car on the doggy. Right. Well, sashimi, don't let him get away. Yeah, grab the money. Hey, bro, I've got your rod. You, you haul him in. And he's a donk. Too much of that green shit. <laughs> <laughs> Old round though, I don't like the wasabi, eh? Alright, Silas is on to a donk here. Steady pressure, bro. We got Trey. Oh, we got leader. Where is it? Oh, it's a. Might have caught a rig. Yeah. Right, let's try to get it without it buggering off. Where's that gaff? Yeah. Watch he doesn't go in the engine there. Hey, oh, get in there you bugger, whoa, hey, it's all on, bloody hell, there's hooks and lines and shit all over the place, whoa, Jesus, mother of Mary, hey, let's get that hook out now while we can, get the hooker out of her. Wait. Round two, Morris is gearing up again. One hour later, and he comes back with two par, or he had a chair, he's par, but they're all undersized, so he's just putting him back on the rocks now. He didn't have any kinner or any crayfish, so we're sending him back in to get some kinners anyway. <laughs> I might have to jump in tomorrow, I think. 
<laughs> yeah, bro, can I? Yeah, there we go. Oh, he is German. We've got to cut him a bit of slack. See that? Yeah, bro. Come on, try it. Try it. That's it. Good, good boy. Good. What are you doing? It's not bad, eh? <laughs> is it alright? Alright. Alright. Nice! It's an acquired taste. It's kind of like eating cats. I mean, cats. <laughs> Charlie just nailed a gurnard. I told these jokers to meet me at the Arrowwater River last night. I said, turn on, take your first left up the gravel road and I'll be camped in there somewhere, but we ended up staying in the hotel units. And uh, what, what did you guys do last night? Spent two hours, checking 26 kilometers. Now, was it a nice scenic drive for you, Reese? <laughs> oh yeah, I was drinking these flavoursome mowers and yeah, we, we ended up camping just there. Did you see any deer? No. Did you fellas camp camp by the no camp no camping sign? Yes. That's where we stay too. <laughs> There's a sweet little shelter there. You just have to go before it gets light so the yeah. Department of Conservation don't come down and go, Oi, you're not allowed to camp here. It's real good. There's toilets right there. It's not for you tourists though, for locals only. You hear that, Moritz? I don't want to wake up and see you camp there tomorrow night. Alright? We'll charge them 15 bucks if we see them. Put it in the kitty. Right, we're gonna go find a campsite. Eh? So we go to the beach. What a massive fire. Awesome, here we are, we have found a campsite, right on the beach, life is good. A whole heap of dolphins out there chasing the car away. Yeah. Oh mate, a steering spoon. Yeah. Awesome, shall we put it in the truck with your other 20 bits of wood that you've carved? Look at them all. Glorious day. Bit of yarning around the fire this morning. Just yarning about the uh, the posts I've been making on commercial fishing and whatnot. Look, I'm not having a go at you commercial fishermen. Totally understand you're just doing your job and you do it well. I'm having a go at the processes that are in place for the commercial fishing industry in New Zealand. I know the majority of you commercial fishermen are good bastards. I've got a fair few friends that are commercial fishermen and they understand I'm just a messenger I'm just getting it out there and they also understand that there used to be a heap more fish in New Zealand than there are now. I think the processes need to change in the commercial fishery industry in New Zealand and I reckon quota should go to the people who catch the fish. Quota shouldn't be able to be held and leased out. It's, it's big money, it's a big dollar industry. I think quota should be held by the commercial fishermen, by the guys doing the hard slog and they should be making the money off the fishing industry in New Zealand, not the guys high up in Parliament and in suits fl flying around in their expensive Eurocopters living on private islands and such. Anyway, that's my rant for this morning. We're going to pack up now and we're going to go fishing. I think this is the only place in New Zealand you can watch the sun rise over the ocean on the west coast. Oh, right. There Something must be like somewhere that. in Fjordland you can do it too. Maybe? I don't know. Maybe Taranaki? Taranaki? I don't know about Taranaki. We'll just say, this is the only place, we just said it, you heard it here first folks, this is the only <laughs> place in New Zealand you can watch the sunrise on the west coast. Out of the sea. Out of the sea. Random, isn't it? Because oh, yeah. we're at home. Reese, Reese just said, Random is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just to emphasize that, that it is random. Right, let's go fishing, Silas. We left the boat up on the road last night so we could drive down to the beach. Into it. Oh, that's it. My braid's getting a bit old, needs to get replaced. It keeps snapping yesterday. Need to get some more line for my reels.
that right there looks like a kingfish, but we don't have a live bait. You can get it. Okay. It's got silo, it's got a bit of weight, has it? Yeah. Terakihi! Oh, Terakihi! Come on, Pat. What did he catch? Baitfish, the old baitfish. <laughs> the old baitfish, eh? Just, just Thought he had a fish on and pulls it up and it's just bait on there. Pat's pretty famous for being one of the unluckiest fishermen out there. And the <laughs> me and Pat used to go hunting and we wouldn't see any deer. This is a guy I keep telling you about, about my mate. He's just so real unlucky and he never catch anything. Today, the tables have turned. <laughs> tables have turned. Very, very slow days fishing today. Very slow. What have we got in the chili bin? A couple of cord. Two or three blue cod and a terra key. There they go, zip are dropping double the amount of 1080 down here now. Doubling up the amount of 1080 they're dropping. Crazy. If they don't throw enough of that shit round, they're doubling it. You know, I think that might be a solution. I reckon, this is my 10 cents worth, they're not far off the mark. They should choose certain valleys in different parts of New Zealand. One in South Westland, one up in North Westland, one up in Nelson, one in Marlborough, one on the East Coast, one in Southland and so on and so forth and they should bomb the shit out of those valleys, they should implement ground control, they should put those little stoke traps in, the south baiting ones, and they should hammer the crap out of these certain valleys and they should leave the rest of New Zealand go free. That's what I reckon the answer is because they've been using 1080 for 60 years now, it's not helping, things aren't changing, birds are still on a downhill decline. I think that's the answer. What say you, New Zealand? Give me a 10 cents worth on that. As much as I like camping, it's awfully nice to roll back to a hotel room. Dad, luxury. Oh, what you got? Oh, a Haas Halley mug. Sweet. Sure, you must have dropped that off, I guess. And a shower. Look at this bathroom. Primo. And <laughs> check that out. Yep. This is mine. Oh, yes. This is like a bloody five star hotel room. <laughs> Unbelievable. Bastard. Thanks top 10. Marvellous place to stay. I think I'll be coming here more often. We're shagged. Me and Charlie shagged, aren't we mate? Look at me. Yep. Shag. Are you shagged? Yep. Good sleep bro? Yep. Couldn't bring ourselves to sleep in the beds though. They were just too nice and clean and tidy. <laughs> we slept in our swags on the floor. You get used to camping and sleeping on hard floors and soft beds just don't cut it anymore. Anyway. We're off home. Home, James. you got to unroll it first, Charlie. No, I just rolled it tight. Now you've got to put the poles in the middle. In London, there's anti-terror rates. Where did the straps go? Oh, you've rolled it the wrong way. So here we are at the top 10 in Haast. Check this place out, it's awesome. These guys have got all sorts of options. They've got camping, powered caravan sites, basic budget rooms for hunters, and they've also got family rooms. Check out these awesome family rooms. Oh, lots of pillows, Dad. Keep you extra comfy. See, two pushes of soap. What are we doing now, Mike? Um, fishing. Yep, go fishing. Back at the homestead, as promised, the Slim Beauty. 
this is a great knot to tie lines of two different thicknesses together so either braid to monofilament or braid to your lane, main line or lead it onto main line it's not quite as low a profile as the PR knot or the FG knot but it's a lot quicker to tie and it's a really strong knot quite easy to tie too so you get your thicker bit of line whether it be your leader or your monofilament or your main line and just tie an overhand knot once and then go around twice like so leave about that much tag end so you can grab it can you see that can I see that can you see that I'm not too sure I'll stay out here so once you've gone around twice around the loop all you do is you pull it tight until it rolls on itself and makes a figure of eight okay I'm gonna hold that nice and close so you can see let me see if you can see that there you go see that figure of eight shape right there okay now what you do is you get your braid or your thinner line make a loop or a bite so just fold it in half so you've got a loop here and then you pass this through the holes following this tag end you go through one of the holes in the figure eight back up through the other hole in the figure eight like so and pull that this way a little bit okay now once you've done that just pinch it right there to make a loop and then wrap it around seven times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, once you've gone around seven times, you pass this end here, back through the loop that you've pinched, grab that, slowly pull it down. So pull your tack, pull your main line of your braid and your loop, slowly work it down nice and tidy give it a wet and once you've wet it you grab all three of these lines pull those at the same time working that down and then once that's tight just grab the end of the loop pull it down nice and tight I'm gonna put that on my tooth here just snug it right up okay now grab your braid pull it super tight working that down really tight as tight as you can get it Pull it tight, work it down, pull it tight, grab your tag into your main line or your monofilament, pull that really tight. There you go, she's done that. All we do now is we trim the loose bits off. So that little bit loose bit there, trim it off. You can trim it off fairly tight. Oh, I wish I had my Shimano pliers, they're out in the boat. I'm just going to use these scissors, they're a bit blunt. Trim the tag end off, they're a lot blunt. They're not even going to cut blimmin' braid, they're so blunt. Blimmin' neck. I'll go get a knife. <laughs> right, I've got my black magic fillet knife here. Okay, I'm just going to trim the tag end off there. Easy. Trim the other tag end off, your braid. Like so, and then trim the monofilament. There we have it. One slim beauty knot, and it's fairly low profile. It three, feeds through your rod, your rod guides really well, and it's a really strong knot. Easy to tie, good for a quick change. Now, if I was fishing for big game and this is my terminal tackle I probably wouldn't use a Slim Beauty I'd probably use an FG or a PR lots of different knots out there this is a really quick one to tie on the boat or on shore if you don't want to tie a swivel or a clip onto the end of your main line I'm on my fishing man. and what are you going to do? I'm going to do diving are you?